This is Leave Your Mark. I'm Vince Cortez, and today's guest is Tracy Reeder Albrecht. She's a resilient individual whose journey with breast cancer has shown a remarkable strength and determination. After a 2015 diagnosis, a subsequent battle with metastatic breast cancer, Tracy's defied expectations by daily walking routine and remaining positive despite the challenges. A native of Pittsburgh, she has a deep love for nature and a creative spirit expressing herself through art mediums like printmaking, oils, and alcohol inks. While cherishing her role as a mother, grandmother, and avid traveler, Tracy, thank you for being my guest today. Thank you for having me. Hi there, and welcome. Now it's time for America's favorite podcast. Leave your mark with your host, Vince Cortez. If it's fly, loose fit it. It's Cortez. If freeze and shove is in it. It's Cortez. Leave your mark. It's about inspiring the world. One guess at a time. Pass the word from Brooklyn to Pittsburgh, from urban to suburb. It's Cortez. You heard? And here is our host, Vince Cortez. You have a unique story as a Pittsburgh native. Uh, I can relate to what your experience and survival with cancer. I want to touch on the two different types later, but first I want to allow everyone to get a better idea of who you are. You're born in Pleasant Hills, PA. I raised there. Your mom, Rose, she's a homemaker of three. You were one of the three and your dad is a CFO at Westinghouse. So it sounds like you had a, a typical type upbringing. So you're the youngest of three. Yes. Share with me that you had experience in Wisconsin and New York. What was childhood like with your sisters? We had a good time because my father was from Wisconsin and his brothers and sisters had farms and we got to hang out on the farms and be with the animals. My mother was from New York. It was the same thing. She grew up on a farm. So I had both the city life experience and I had the country style lifestyle and it was fantastic. That's really nice mix because it rounds you out in your mindset and you're understanding what's going on in both areas. So now you go to St. Elizabeth high school and you have an interesting experience there where you, you enjoy running but you're not on any of the athletic teams. So what is that window of life like? I had a boyfriend who became my husband. So as you know, Pittsburgh is very hilly. So we used to have contests who could run up the hill faster. And the hills of Pittsburgh are steep. So we had a lot of fun. I met him when I was 50. We, were, we had an idyllic childhood, I would say, because our parents were very down to earth and they were very good parents. Engaged. Very engaged. Yeah, I it, I think in, in these years, not just, you know, the, the when you're younger, but the teen years to help kids along the way. You graduate from St. E's and head to the University of Alabama. Right. So you're going on now and you're going for an art major. So share with me how life begins to unfold after you leave Pittsburgh. Oh, wow. We moved to Alabama. The day we got there, it was 105 degrees. And I said, did you bring me to hell? It's very hot. Alabama, though, was one of the best places I've lived besides Pittsburgh. They were very innovative. Huntsville, Alabama has NASA. So there's more PhDs per capita. My experience at the University of Alabama was pure joy. It was pure joy because I got to create I was a mother. I got to live my life and I had support from my ex-husband. Always encouraged me to paint. Then he still does. As a creative person, when you feel that sense of freedom, it, that, I don't think anything's any better than that. And then you're in the window of time where you're being exposed to different techniques and learning more about it. That I'm sure that did feel really good. It really did. And even since then, with using different media like or mediums like alcohol ink, that's be, that I started that in 2022 before I got cancer. And that has carried me through to today. It's a very easy medium to use, but it's one that you have to figure out. And I did. I've been figuring it out, producing. It's what I have to do. If I don't paint, I literally can go insane. It's something, it's just like brushing my teeth. I have to brush my teeth. I have to paint. That's great. That's, that's 
talk about motivation. Now let's touch on here. So you come out of school, move to North Carolina, continue with your art and, and life begins. I had a second child in Alabama. My boys are seven years apart. We moved to South Carolina for a brief stint, which was not fun. And then we moved to North Carolina and I was with my husband for one more year and then called it quits. My boys were 14 and seven at the time. It was difficult, but painting got me through it. Now, life takes hold and some time goes by here. And I want to address the, in 2015, where you get diagnosed that you have breast cancer. What was your initial thought when you were told this diagnosis? I actually diagnosed myself and found the huge lump in my breast. I had a, a mammogram a year and a half prior. This tumor grew really fast. I was in the shower and felt it. When I got the diagnosis, I was scared and in shock, couldn't react. As I went through the process, breast cancer treatments, being tired, losing my hair, all of that stuff, I started concentrating on the people that I was meeting and what they were doing to help me. And that got me through because like I have said, like when you meet people you otherwise would not meet when you have cancer. And if you are open, you receive such love from these people because they had to choose that profession to go into oncology of any sort to help the most understanding people you can have in your life is the medical teams that you talk to. They're really there for you. That's my takeaway. Ready to start your own journey? Watch Leave Your Mark podcast mini course on YouTube today. Discover powerful insights, real stories, and tips to unleash your potential. Don't wait. Take action now. Start making your mark. Click the link in the description below to watch the mini course. And now, back to our episode. So, you had an idea that you had cancer that confirmed it. Now, you go for a seven-year window. Now, when that original situation happened, was there anything done about it? Or how did it play out after you thought you had it, then you told you were had it? What happened? I, I suspected I had it since I found that huge lump. Is that the cancer, the first cancer? Yeah, totally. It's been so long, and this cancer affects me more than that cancer did. I was scared. Were you treating it? Oh, yeah, viciously. I went through five months of chemo, 36 treatments of radiation, and it was very hard. Okay, so then are you put in a remission status at this point? And... I was never put in a remission status because my oncologist would not do scans until I became injured. And I became injured seven years later mm. or in that seven year span. And I have metastatic breast cancer to bone stage four, and it's also spread to my liver now. Okay. So during that seven year window, she wouldn't give you a scan. Were you under treatment that whole time? I would go see her every three. Yeah. Checkups. I would argue with her. I need. I think that's really interesting because myself being removed, it's like they have me every year and I'm at a point now where I've, I get a two year window before another scan, but I'm, I've not been called under remissions. It's interesting because if they label you, you get treated differently. And it sounded like you not being labeled that you got treated differently anyway. So it's always interesting how the doctor reads each patient with everybody being different. Right. So. Now you have this metastatic cancer and the situation has gotten much more severe. And you mentioned uh, that you do daily walking. Share with me uh, like a routine of your day right now, how you're keeping attitude or gratitude and continuing to be grateful for life and what it has to offer even on this level. Here's the story. I got this diagnosis that it has spread. I went through several operations to get femur rods in my legs. My arm broke when I was opening a water bottle. Mm. A rod in that arm and the other arm, they put cement in. Your health is deteriorating quicker than the first time. You mentioned that your mindset the first time is different than the second time. Can you share with me 
what, how do you recognize the difference and, and what is the difference like? And the difference this time is that it's throughout my body and I'm terminal. I have had to mourn my own death. I've had to accept the fact that I'm going to die. I am not afraid to die. I'm just not ready. I feel like God has more in store for me. I am supposed to help people that are possibly in my situation. This morning, I met a guy on the trail. I was walking. He had cancer. He had lymphoma. Tears in his eyes telling me. I told him my story. We ended up hugging each other. Two total strangers telling each other, I love you. That's, those are the kind of moments that I have now because of this cancer, because I'm more open-minded to everything. And I feel that cancer, when you have it for a reason, it's not to drag you down and ruin your life. It's to make you open your eyes and see what's out there. And you're an instrument of God. And it's a very hard place to be as a human, but on the spiritual level, level it's amazing. Yes, it is. You just touched on something there as a cancer patient and internal communication or unspoken thing. You relate on an emotional level, so you're almost friends immediately. I, I remember going through treatments and getting close to people because you see them every two weeks. You're sharing, fighting, and the most difficult part is when one of those folks are, are no longer with us. And so you question, I'm still here for a reason. Your belief of it's not time for you to leave here is strong enough to keep you experiencing more of those moments. I like that. That's exciting to hear. I wasn't walking last year. I was using a walker and a cane and I could barely walk. 2023 was a healing year and a blur. I recently started walking this year very slowly at first, and now I'm up to two and a half miles, sometimes three a day. That's great. And it's because I got a dog. I've had dogs most of my life. I've had five German Shepherds. I now have a sixth one. Everybody encouraged me to get a dog because it would help me because I am a dog person. So I went ahead and got the dog. She's an angel sent from God. Strange to say, but dog spelled backward is God. <laughs> <laughs> but they see you're paying attention. Huh? <laughs> Now, how do you continue to learn about your situation to stay on top of it and have peace of mind? My medical team is fantastic. They keep me informed. I don't look up things on the internet because you never know what you're going to find. Sometimes you're finding the wrong information. So I, I stay away from that. I trust my medical team because it is a learning hospital, which I like. And they, it's just the finest care I could receive. Love it. And there, what is the most important thing you've learned in your life? That everything is going to be okay. No matter what you're going through, everything is going to be okay. And that was spoken into my ear by God. Everything's okay. Yes. Be not afraid. I wrote my book and started Leave Your Mark podcast to share my story of battling cancer. Not just for me, but for anyone facing their own struggles. I wanted people to know that no matter how tough life gets, there's always hope and strength within us. My mission is to inspire others to tap into that power and leave their mark on this world. You can purchase my book on Amazon today and discover the powerful lessons from my cancer journey that can help you overcome life's toughest challenges. Now, back to the episode. If you had a billboard, what would it say? Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> that leads me to know, how would you like to leave your mark? Through my artwork, which I feel like I already have since the Cancer Center bought my work, it'll be there. After I'm gone, people will still be looking at it. That means the world to me. I believe so. If I leave more marks along the way, that's great. I always wanted to touch people with my artwork. I've accomplished that goal, and I'm free to do whatever I want, which is amazing. Isn't it funny how life happens? And you mentioned earlier where that the cancer happened for a reason, and it's being revealed to you now, and that time going by is the most precious and we're getting the most value out of it. I think you're sharing that eloquently through your art 
and your emotion of wanting to reach out and touch other people with your story. Thank you. I mean, I want to thank you for being my guest to the, we're praying for you. Just share real quick, the current care you're under now, what type of treatments or how are you receiving the care that they're giving you? I take a cancer or a chemo pill, two pills every day, which screws with me mentally and physically. It's a hard drug to take. And I also go once a month for shots of chemo. And then I get a bone shot to make my bones stronger. I went through a really dark period after having gone to the emergency room one time when I broke my arm through this cancer. And I had a a desperate moment. I was at the lowest I had ever been. This was just March of 2023, 2024, excuse me. I was crying my eyes out. I asked my mother and my sister who have passed away to please be with me. Please be with me today. And I included God, of course, please be with me today. So I ended up going over to my neighbor's house. She's very pleasant. She's been one of my caregivers. We went for a walk at the Botanical Gardens in Kernersville. They have placards that say what the plants are. My mother's name is Rose. My sister's name is Sharon. I, I'm walking along. My neighbor starts to talk to somebody. So I'm looking at this placard of this tree that was just gorgeous. It was April Rose. My mother was born in April. Her name is Rose. Next to it was a Japanese maple called Sister Ghost. That is how my sister would have communicated with me. She had Down syndrome. So she would say, I'm your sister, but I'm a ghost now. It changed my Oh my God, you just gave me goosebumps. I got them too. Because of that experience, there is nothing to fear. Everything is going to be okay. Where can we see your art? Mostly on Facebook and Instagram. I don't have a website. So Facebook and Instagram, Tracy Reader Albrecht. Thank you so much. We'll be praying for you. Thank you so much, Jenner, and I will be praying for you guys. This has been a real honor to be on your show. You just left your mark. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Listen to more episodes on demand. Just click Leave Your Mark with Vince Cortez. Don't miss out. Watch the next episode now. It's packed with insights that could be the breakthrough you need to overcome your challenges and unlock your potential. Time's ticking, so take action and start transforming your life today.